In the first video, we looked at creating a user form and making it appear in the spreadsheet. In this video, we're gonna to try to build up the user form and get it doing something useful for us. So let's get straight into the spreadsheet files. Remember, you can download these spreadsheet files from the website and work along with me. I'm on the end file at the moment, so this is the completed file. This is where we're trying to get to. If I click on the add button, I can make the user form appear. And this is what we're working towards. So this is just a user form, but it has some things on it, as you can see. And these are called controls, the things that appear on a user form. In our user form, we've got three or four different controls. We've got some simple text labels down the side here. Then we have text boxes. The user can input text here, just a free text input. We can also tab through these boxes, just hitting the tab key. That's another nice time-saving feature. Then we've got these combo boxes, and these give us a drop-down menu type option, also a nice uh, time-saving feature. Again, we can tab through. Then these are called option buttons. If I click one, the other is automatically unclicked. So again, another nice feature. And then of course, down at the bottom, we've got our command buttons. We use these command buttons in the first video to trigger uh, some code. So these are the main features of the user form. In this video, we're gonna take our user form that has nothing on, build it up uh, with these controls, getting it look, looking much more like something that's going to be useful to us. So let's get into it. I'm gonna go back to the start file go to the Visual Basic Editor, so Alt uh, F11 shortcut on the PC. And again, I've got a couple of files open, so I've got to make sure I'm working in the right file. Just gonna close down this one, and this is the file we're working on. It says start here, so this is uh, what I need. Let's go to the user form. This is what we've done so far. We've just got a command button uh, in there, so this is a decent start. I'm gonna just resize it. I think it's gonna to have to be a little bit bigger than this. We just drop this button down to the bottom uh, for the time being. A little bit of resizing there. We do get this nice uh, dotted grid effect which helps us position things and things do automatically snap to the grid. That helps us to line things up, make things look neat and tidy. So what are we gonna go for first? Let's try a label uh, first. So I'm just going to click on this capital A in the toolbox, and then draw, uh, draw a space, draw a shape there on the user form. And we can see label one. So we've created a label. A, a label is just good for putting some text on the user form. It's good in our case because we want, the, we want to tell the user what the box is for. So I'm just gonna edit this and let's say, let's say first name here. And then I'm gonna need another label for surname. So I'm just clicking on the first label. If I hover the mouse pointer over the kind of border around the label, we can see it becomes this, this symbol that means we can move it. So I'm gonna hold down the control key and then just reposition using uh, the mouse pad. I've now got two, two labels there. So that's a good technique um, rather than uh, reformatting something every time you create a label, much easier to copy paste an existing label. Let's have surname in here. Okay, so we're getting started with a couple of labels. Now it's good at this point to think about the names of the things that you're putting into the user form. This is important because later on we're gonna use code. We want to be able to easily reference what's on the user form. So, and we've got the names uh, down here, so we can give these controls, the things we're putting on the user form, we can give them names. Just something to be aware of for the time being. We're not gonna rename the labels. When we get onto text boxes and other things, we certainly are going to rename them. So we've got our labels there, but I want a couple of text boxes here so the user can input uh, some information using the keyboard. So let's go for text box. So that's this icon here. You just click and you can see the mouse pointer has changed. And I can click and hold and drag and just release uh, the mouse there. And this has given me uh, a text box. I'm gonna do the same thing again. 
uh, control, left mouse key, and hold down the control key, and just copy the text box down. So now I've got two text boxes uh, that, that are exactly the same. And we can see because of the way things snap to the grit when we're creating a user form, these are neat and tidy, nicely lined up. It's absolutely essential, I think, to make things neat and tidy, nicely lined up. That's gonna help the user use the user form uh, more efficiently. Let's go back to the spreadsheet at this point, and I'm just gonna call the user form again, back to the data sheet. I'm gonna call the user form using the add button, click the add button. We can see the user form displaying here. So this gives us a sense of what it's actually going to look like. And I can see the continue button here is a little bit too close to the edge of the user form. So I'm going to reposition that back to the Visual Basic Editor. Let's get back to, the, to where we need to be. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to drop this button in a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so we've got uh, two labels two text boxes. So I'm not going to go through everything uh, in this video. I'll do a little bit of work outside of the videos uh, to kind of get up to speed to get everything into the, um, into the user form. I'm going to go through the main elements though. So we've got text boxes. What else have we got on the user form? Let's go back to the end file. We've also got these nice uh, drop down menus which are called combo boxes. These are excellent for speedy data input. I can click an option there. I can also hold down the Alt key and the down cursor, Alt key and down cursor, and then just use the cursors to choose an option. So super uh, efficient, uh, great little feature there. So how do we put those into the user form? So these are called combo boxes. So hover over this fourth icon here, just click. And then the same thing, we're gonna just click and hold. And then we've got our combo box uh, in there. This seems to be a good size. Let's just do a combo box for gender here. So I'm gonna pull down um, this text box. So hold down the control key, left, left mouse, click, and then we just copy that down. I'm gonna edit the, edit the text box here, gender. Okay, so we can see we can see the edit the label rather, the label says gender. So we can see the combo box there. We can see this nice arrow and we know intuitively if we click on that, we're gonna get some options. But at the moment we haven't linked the combo box to anything. So it's not displaying any information. It's not giving us any options at the moment. So how do we do that? How do we get something displaying in the combo box? Let's go back to the start file. Here we are. Now, at this point, it's good to think about spreadsheet file structure. Now, I have a certain way I usually structure my spreadsheet files. And in all of the spreadsheet files I build, you'll see a sheet called lists and you'll see a sheet called engine. Now, the list, the, the list sheet, rather, the list sheet I use for making lists, which is exactly what we're doing now. We want to list some information to put in that combo box. But we don't want this information to be available to the user necessarily. It would be annoying for the user to have to look at these lists all the time. So it's a good idea to put that information in the back end on a separate sheet. Uh, it can do the job for us there. The user doesn't need to see it. So it's a good idea to start thinking about having multiple sheets and the, the role of different sheets, uh, front end and back end. So I've got a list sheet. I also have a sheet called engine, which we're gonna come on to later. And I use this sheet to manage the interaction between the spreadsheet and the Visual Basic Editor to help run the code, important uh, things that are gonna help the code run smoothly, I put on the engine sheet. But at the moment, we're interested in the list sheet. And you can see I've pre-prepared some options here. So I've got a yes, no list just with yes, no there. I've got the gender list ready, the region, the job status. So you can plan ahead now, think what do I want on this user form? What options do I want for each question? And it's a good idea to create these menus in this format now, so very simple. Uh, I've given each, each one a header and then all of the options in the column below. That means we can easily reference it from uh, the Visual Basic Editor. 
So for gender, I would like these three options to appear. So I've got to think, where are these options in the spreadsheet? They're on the list sheet and the reference is C4 to C6. Because we're working with the Visual Basic Editor, we can't do what we would do if we were working with data validation in the spreadsheet. We can't simply uh, select them. We have to actually type in the reference into the Visual Basic Editor. So we, we've got lists C4 to C6. So that information is going to be important. Let's click on the combo box. Remember, in the bottom left-hand corner, we have all of the properties. So this is where we can manage the control, get it working for us. Now, we're interested in a property which is row source, just here, row source. Now, row source is where is the information that you want to appear in the combo box. That's useful for us now because we want some information to appear in there. Now we type in the name of the sheet, which is lists, and then the reference, which I think was C3 to C5. Not absolutely sure, but we're going to test it. So that's what we need. The name of the sheet. We don't need any inverted commas or speech marks, just the name of the sheet, an exc exclamation mark, and then the reference. Okay, so let's give that a go. So if I now go back to the data sheets, then I'm going to get our user form up. We can see it's building now, getting a little bit more, uh, looking more useful, very exciting. Yeah, and we can see we have some options in the combo box, but the options aren't quite right for what we're doing. That's totally normal for me. Um, I always, you know, give the code a go, test it, and then tweak it later. I think that's gen generally a good approach to code as long as you save the file as you go along. Uh, so this isn't quite right. The, the reference is one row too high. So I can go back to the Visual Basic Editor, combo box, properties. I want the row source property, which is just here, and then just edit this. So I want C4 to C6. That should do the job. Back to the spreadsheet, give it a test. And there in the combo box, we've got these options appearing exactly as we want them to appear. And remember, just to repeat, with a combo box, you can hold down the Alt key and use the cursors to select an option. Generally, with a user form, and we're going to look at how to achieve this idea, you want to get to a point where the user doesn't have to click around too much on the user form. Ideally, the user will be able to use the tab key, the alt key, the cursor keys to navigate the user form. That means they're going to be able to do the data input much more efficiently. We're going to look in this video series how, how we can achieve that. So I'm pretty happy with this. I've got my um, text inputs and I've got a combo box here. So what else do we have uh, on the end user form? I'm just going to go back to the end spreadsheet here. We'll have to quit this user form first. Okay, we've also got these nice option button controls. So I can click on these and select an option uh, very quickly. So how do we put those in, the option buttons? Uh, so I've got to make sure I'm in the right place again. There we go. So back to the toolbox and this icon here, the option button icon. Just going to click on there and again, kind of draw a shape on the user form. A little bit bigger maybe, and then I'm going to copy this across. So holding down the control key and just moving it across. Then I can, I can edit the text in here. And let's just have yes and no. So I can edit the text, just double click. Don't double click rather. If you double click, it will go into the Visual Basic Editor and it's trying to help you put some code in. We don't want to do that yet. So not a double click, just a single click. And that allows us to edits the text. So I'm going to have a yes and a no. And then this is looking good, but there's something else we need to do. Well, first I'm going to get these lining up nicely. And then I want another text label. So I'm going to copy one down, hold down the control key, just dra drag one down. And then let's say uh, smoker. And maybe down one more hit. Just one more. There we go. Okay, so we've got our two option buttons. And you'll notice if we go back to the 
end file, you'll notice that if I click on one option button, the other option button automatically unclicks itself. Now, this is important because you wouldn't want both of the option buttons clicked at the same time. That simply wouldn't make sense. So how do we achieve that? Let's go back to the Visual Basic Editor. Let's move the toolbox there. Okay, so we do that um, using the properties of the control here. So we've got option button one. Remember, in the properties, we can control the behavior, get it doing what we need it to do. I'm just going to make a little more room here. And we're interested in group name here. So option buttons have this uh, property, which is group name. And there it's saying, what are the other option buttons in this group? Can we create a group of option buttons? And within that group, only one option button will be clicked at any, at any particular time. So let's call this a smoker, the group name. And the yes option button is in there. So I'm going to click on the no option button. I've got the properties in the bottom left hand corner here. Then we're going to go for the smoker group name again. So that should create this effect we're looking for where if we click one, the other one should unclick. Let's go back to the spreadsheet file at, we can see this is coming together nicely. So what happens if I click on one of these? Yeah, that's, that's the, that's, that is the behavior we're looking for. But you'll notice that when I loaded the user form, you can see that neither option is ticked. Now I would like one option to be, to be true, to be ticked by default. That's gonna speed things up uh, for the user. So that, let's make that happen. Back to the Visual Basic Editor. And let's, let's have the no option clicked by default. And we can do that. I'm just gonna resize this a little bit. There we go. Value right at the bottom. Right at the bottom, we've got this uh, property, which is a value. If we set that to true, that means that the uh, option button will appear clicked when the user form displays. So let's just test that again. Click the add button. We can see that the option button is, <clears throat> is true there and I can click between them. So already just done a few minutes work there, put some controls in, free text, menus, and this nice option button. I think just with those three controls, you're gonna be able to do most of the data input that you'll want to do. Let's look at one more thing here. Um, this color is fine, but also a little bit drab, this gray color. So what options have we got for changing the colors? Well, again, I have to do some resizing. I'm gonna go back to our user form. Now, if we go to uh, back color, click on any of these objects. Let's just click on the whole user form. If we go to back color, we can look at our color options there. So let's, let's go for a, a red back color. I think that's a bit too red. I'm gonna to have to go for this, this, this kind of pink, pink effect. I don't think I'd actually use this color in real life, but just for the purposes of explaining. Um, so we can change the color there using the back color property and then to change the other um, to change the other controls here. I'm going to hold down the control key, just select them, then go to back color and this should allow me to change them all uh, at the same time. There we go. So we've got some nice options there for controlling color. Let's go back to the spreadsheet, just see uh, what that looks like. And there we go. Okay, so that's as far as we're gonna go in this video, but we've looked at how to add controls to the user form. And already we're, we're developing something that's quite useful, quite powerful. We've got some free text controls in there. We've got some menus in there to select some options. We've also got some option buttons in there. So I'm not gonna go any further in this video, but I will build this up myself between the videos. And in the next video, we're gonna look at how to get this working really well. So we want to collect some information here. We're already able to collect some information from the user. We want to put that information into the spreadsheet. To do that, we're going to have to use some visual basic code. See you in the next video.